So where you go by? Where I go by? Diana. Do you want my nickname? Um... Or do you want to go... It can be both. Okay. I I go by Diana now. I used to be called Dirty. My street name, my gang name. What's your nationality? I'm Chicana. My dad's Mexican. My dad's from... Well, my mom's from here. Were you ever part of any gangs, groups, organization, or in a Yeah. Circuit? Yeah, I used to hang with the Norteños. I was in Norteña. Uh, where is it located? In Kansas. But they originally is from Northern Cali. How is it that you're from um, Kansas and you're in a, um, a Northern California gang? They move. There's Northern Colorado. There's, there's, they're everywhere. What made you join? What made me join? Well, I used to fit in. I belonged with them. They were my type of people. They ran the streets. They did drugs. They did everything that I was actually into. Or I liked or enjoyed at the time. I know you're out right now, but what were you incarcerated for? Uh, distribution of meth, distribution of coke, distribution of marijuana, pretty much. Possessions. DUIs. And how long were you sentenced? I was sentenced to 10 years, but I did seven. When you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Um, when I first got sentenced, I cried a lot because my sentence was, I was looking at 20 years. First thing I thought was about my kids sitting in jail. The first time I thought about my kids, actually. Um, going to prison, I was pretty scared. I heard a lot of things about prison, so I was, I was scared. So what is the role of a female gang member? What is my what? What is the role of a female gang member? Oh, it's, well, it's pretty bad. I mean, well, when I first got in, my uh, initiation was, uh, yeah, I got jumped by 14 girls, because I was number 14, and uh, they, beat the, they beat the crap out of me. And then with the guys, it was either be with 14 guys or do a drive-by. So I had a choice. I decided to do the drive by and uh, they took me out to this trailer park and we did a drive by at the trailer park there. So, I mean, I don't know if I hit anybody or anything, but that was the issue for that. And then when, that, that, when I was in there as a girl, I would like reel in rival members so that, that, you know, my guys can jump them, steal them, whatever the fuck they had to do with them. Uh, I would be the, drive, the getaway driver Sometimes I didn't even know how to drive a stick shift, but I had to learn. Um, I would carry the drugs, the guns. Pretty much did the dirty work, I guess. I was a dummy runner. Back into houses, I would look out. Can you elaborate how it was like growing up and uh, the challenges you have faced as a, as a youth? Well, the drug running in the streets is pretty bad. You're getting raped, you're getting beaten. I got raped a lot, I got beat a lot. Just, I mean, to stay at people's houses. You know, I got, sometimes I have to sleep with them, depending on where I was staying at. <laughs> they have places to shower, so everywhere that I had to go, if it wasn't some of my homeboys' houses or any of my people that I knew, I would have to, you know, use my body to, in exchange, to be able to eat there, shower there, whatever I needed to do, I'd have to use my body in order to pay, you know? So tell me how it was like in a women's prison. Were there any politics, beating, fights, riots, or anything of that nature? Well, women's prison is different than guys, completely. We don't have politics, not at all. It's crazy. Everybody's just cat fighting everywhere. It's more like a little lesbian community. I mean, there's drugs, there's cell phones, 
but it's very few because women are, we're, we don't work together. I mean, if you're there 10 years and above, you got, you got, I guess you got a rank, you got a group, you belong to a group. If you don't, you know, if you don't belong to a group, then, I mean, you're pretty much the outcast, the ones that they pick on, the ones that they're, they're going to take from you. Uh, I came in, when I came in, I went in straight with the lifer. I got under, you know, lifer took me under the wing, but still, um, there's rapes. They say a chick wants you. You don't want her. I mean, the whole group is going to rape you. Because that's how mad she is with you, you know? Um, there's like, a, okay, when I first went in and I got turned out, uh, this chick walked in the shower with me. You know, I didn't know, but you can't scream. You can't really much. I mean, you can. You can scream, but then you both are going to get rolled. You both are going to get hit with the loot act. Loot act is like, you know, something that you, you both wanted it. They, cause they can't prove. So you either go with it or you both go to the hole. So I went with it. But then if you're dating somebody there, there's always an ex-girlfriend. It's such a small community because there's so many group of women that you're going to be fighting. I was fighting left and right because if I was with somebody, she had an ex-girlfriend. So I went, you know, I was always in the hole for some, somebody. Politics, there's none, there's none of that. No Girls cannot stick together enough to do a pol to be do have any type of politics there. So everybody's just fighting left and right. It's just it's different. We're fucking the guards. We're getting more stuff in the prison, you know. But like let's say I get in some drugs, and this chick don't like me, and she knows that I have them. She's gonna snitch on me. It's called the snitch nine. There are four nines that they fill out, and uh, that's it. Or uh, let's say I bring in some drugs and I don't share with somebody, and she finds out, they're going to do the same thing. So I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't, you know? So if you decide to have something, a cell phone or drugs in there, it's got to just be you that knows. And you know, even if somebody suspects it, they're going to say, and again, they're going to do a snitch nine because either you're not sharing with them or because you have it and they want it. It's a lot of evil enviness. There's so much jealousy within women. Well, do you use the type of um, contraband or material you get from the guards uh, when you trade them sexual favors? Mainly makeup. We get makeup. Uh, it's pretty much it. Cell phones. Once in a great while, because the guards are pretty scared of bringing in stuff also. Because, like I said, we're evil. Women are evil. There's a lot of guards doing a lot of prison time for women, especially now, because we're state property. So if you you know, if you're with the guard, if they find out any woman is with the guard and they tell the guard gets arrested and gets uh, charged with uh, rape, you know, they get serious charges. And the girl, as us, we get a lot of money because we're state property. So they're pretty scared. But mainly the girls are more into the makeup, the perfumes, the Victoria's Secret, the good stuff from the street. So that's what they would really bring. So, I mean, there's a guard that would bring food in the middle of the night, food from the outside. It's the women's, we, we don't get the food from the outside. What would get an inmate beat up or even stabbed, killed, and things of that nature? Pretty much the snitching, I mean, or getting, okay, usually when you get with the guard, it's always like this. This is a group of us. If they, we want this guard, we want to reel him in, we want stuff from this guard. If one of the girls goes behind her back and does it without letting us know, that's it. Yeah, she's gonna get beat up. That's it, she's out, no more. Because she fucked everything up for all of us. And what made you change your life around? I mean, it came to the life of God. God, I was tired of it. I sat there and realized, I wanna eat pussy for the rest of my life. Can I deal with this for the rest of my life? Am I even gay? My question was, no. I'm tired, like, there are some women even eating nutmeg to get high in there. I just, I got tired of that. I seen, uh, this lady came in and did her testimony, and she was talking about she was, she used to be an inmate there. Her husband used to be on drugs, like, she just told her story, and it's what I wanted. I wanted that. I was tired of it. My kids were telling me they were tired of me. I was a grown-ass woman, and just... Okay, I don't know how it came, but my, I mean, I say my miracle came in silence because 
I slowly, slowly started changing. I didn't want to fight no more. I didn't want to date nobody no more in there. I was getting bullied. I allowed, allowed myself to get bullied because I wanted to go home. For some reason, I didn't want to react. And when I finally wanted to react, I got put in the hole before I reacted. So it, I felt like that was God taking me from the situation that I didn't want to be in. And I just slowly just, I didn't want it no more. My only answer to that is God, because I prayed to him, I, I didn't want to do that no more. It wasn't for me. What would you have to say to the youngsters that's thinking about joining gangs? As a youngster? Oh, oh man. What do well, you have to say to the youngsters, the youth, about that's thinking about joining gangs? Oh, they're not your friends. They're not. They're nobody. They're just, they're just there to use you, pretty much. The older cats, they just, they need somebody young. They need, they need the youngsters to do their dirty work. You know, How, they're not friends, they're not, those are not your real friends, that's what I'm saying. That's not the group that anybody belongs in. I just wish they would turn, turn the other way and finish school, get an education, because now at my age, I don't even know what I was thinking. I just wish I would have turned the other way and just got my education and finished my education. Because in reality, I did my time by myself with my mom and my girls next to me, and at the end, they're not here. Still, I get out. What do they want to do? They want to run the street again? No. Are they your friends? So what you have been do? What? So what have you been doing since you got released? How? How, how is life for you right now? <sighs> well, I work at factory. Um, since I've been out, I, I, didn't, I, I took it took me about two weeks to get a job. It's not hard with a staffing agency. But the staffing agency are going to put you where, it's, you know, it's hard labor, but they're not going to pay you very much. So I've been working uh, factory jobs. I've been, you know, slowly I've been looking for more that can pay better. But with my felonies, they got to be so far apart or so far along behind so I can get a better job. So, uh, like, I've been working labor jobs, 12-hour shifts. I work right now nights. Um... I live in a small town off Houston so I can pay my rent because it's expensive. So, but I have been working. I've been working ever since. It's just harder for me to get a job, like in an office, uh, at school, anywhere that I, I want to feel comfortable and be like, okay, this is what I want to do. I can't do it right now because of my felony. So I'm doing what I must do where they hire me. I don't have any further questions. But do you have any final words before we close this interview? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess for everybody, you know, I used to use my abuse, my rape, whatever I went through when I was a kid, I used to use that as an excuse to be in the gangs. I felt like this is where I belong because I've been raped, because I've been beaten, because I do drugs now. I, I used that as a crutch me at my entire life, which I ended up in prison. And I'm still in prison, I use that as my crutch. I should have used it as my strength the entire time. And who knows, I could have been somebody better now. I, I, don't, I don't regret the person that I am now because I'm a strong person, I'm a strong individual, and I'm helping people now. But my advice is don't use that. Don't use any of your abuse, your rapes, your beats, whatever you went through. No, Dad, or no, Mom. Don't use that as a crutch. Use it as your strength, you know? We don't, we have more than what a person that's been, that hasn't been through whatever we've been through. We have more knowledge, we have more strength in us to do more for somebody out here, for ourselves. So that would be my advice. Don't use, don't use your abuse, don't use any of that stuff as a crutch. Use it as your strength and build yourself up to be a better person. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Diana from the Nathaniels. Um, we appreciate you taking your time off on your busy schedule and um, you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.